हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू रीड द चैप्टर टू ऑफ हॉर्नबिल टाइटल वी आर नॉट अफ्रेड टू डाई इफ वी कैन ऑल बी टुगेदर रिटन बाय गॉर्डन कुक एंड एलन ईस्ट वी आर नॉट अफ्रेड टू डाई इफ वी कैन ऑल बी टुगेदर एज द टाइटल सजेस्ट इज एन एडवेंचरस और डी लेट सी इट इज़ एन अकाउंट ऑफ द नैरेटर्स ग्रिट एंड करेज टू फेस एडवर्सिटीज एस्पेशली वेन वन एन्जॉयज द फेथ एंड सपोर्ट ऑफ इज किथ एंड किन The lesson is a heart-rending account of how the family of the narrator, his wife Mary, his son Jonathan, aged six, and daughter Suzanne, aged seven, had a close encounter with death during their voyage. After crossing Cape Town, their boat, Wave Walker, was caught in rough seas and was badly damaged by a gigantic wave. The family was badly bruised. still they kept their courage for they found their strength in their togetherness the lesson is a treatise on courage and valor if one keeps one's calm in times of adversities and maintains faith and conviction in one's own strength even god seems to stand by the side of such valiant and brave people now let us read the chapter in july 1976 my wife mary son jonathan 6 daughter suzanne 7 and i set sail from plymouth england to duplicate the round the world voyage made 200 years earlier by captain james cook for the longest time mary and i a 37 year old businessman had dreamt of sailing in the wake of following in the wake of the famous explorer and for the past 16 years we had spent all our leisure time honing our seafaring skills in british waters our boat wave walker a 23 meter ton wooden hulled beauty had been professionally built and we had spent months fitting it out and testing it in the roughest weather we could find so the narrator 37 year old businessman along with his wife mary and two children jonathan and suzanne went on a voyage on their ship in july 1976 they started from plymouth england they wanted to complete the sea trip around the world just like the one that had been completed 200 years ago by the famous captain james cook the narrator and his wife spent 16 years improving their seafaring skills means the skills that are required to travel by sea they got a ship built professionally a 23 meter long 30 ton heavy wooden hulled called wave walker they took several months to test it in the roughest of weathers the first leg of our planned 3 year 105000 km journey passed pleasantly as we sailed down the west coast of africa to cape town the first leg means the first part of their journey so the initial phase of the 3 year long journey of 105000 km it passed pleasantly and they sailed down the west coast of africa to cape town there before heading east we took on two crew men american larry vigil and swiss herb sigler to help us tackle one of the world's roughest seas the southern indian ocean so the narrator he hired two crew men before heading towards the east to tackle the roughest sea the southern indian ocean which is the world's roughest seas yes the southern indian ocean and the names of the crew men were larry vigil an american and herb sigler a swiss on our second day out of cape town we began to encounter strong gales for the next week they blew continuously gales did not worry me but the size of the waves was alarming up to 15 meters as high as our mast so on the second day in cape town they encountered a strong wind which continued for several weeks a strong wind 
was not a problem gales means strong wind it was not a problem but 15 meters high waves which were the height of the mast worried the narrator december 25 found us 3500 kilometers east of cape town despite atrocious weather we had a wonderful holiday complete with a christmas tree so on december 25 they had traveled 3500 kilometers east of cape town they celebrated christmas together despite the bad weather new year's day saw no improvement in the weather the weather it remained the same till new year's day but we reasoned that it had to change soon but they hoped for it to change soon and it did change for the worse the weather conditions they worsened the weather changed but it worsened at dawn on january 2 the waves were gigantic the waves were huge we were sailing with only a small storm jib and were still making eight knots so on the early morning of 2nd january the waves were very huge and these people they were sailing with a small storm jib at a speed of 8 knots as the ship rose to the top of each wave we could see endless enormous seas rolling towards us and the screaming of the wind and spray was painful to the ears when the ship was sailing with the huge waves they could see the huge sea in front of them the noise of the waves and the strong winds was painful for the ears to slow down to slow the boat down we dropped the storm jib and lashed a heavy mooring rope in a loop across the stern then we double lashed everything went through our life raft drill attached lifelines donned oil skins and life jackets and waited so these people they dropped the storm jib to slow down the ship and hit a heavy mooring rope across the back part of the ship in a loop they lashed everything with double force they put on their oil skins and life jackets attached lifelines and went through the life raft drills and waited The first indication of impending disaster came at about 6 p.m. with an ominous silence. Ominous silence means threatening silence. The wind dropped and the sky immediately grew dark. Then came a growing roar and an enormous cloud towered aft of the ship. With horror, I realized that it was not a cloud but a wave like no other I had ever seen. It appeared perfectly vertical and almost twice the height of the other waves with a frightful breaking crest. Around 6 p.m., an unpleasant silence rolled over. It was an indication of a disaster which was about to happen. The wind, it suddenly dropped and the sky was darker with heavy clouds. Huge cloud was coming towards the stern of the ship, but later the narrator realized it was a huge wave. The wave was perfectly vertical and it was twice the height of the previous waves they saw with the top of the wave looking unpleasant due to its height. The roar increased to a thunder as the stern moved up the face of the wave and for a moment I thought we might ride over it. So the thunder it increased and the wave moved the stern up and they thought that it would not do any damage but then a tremendous explosion shook the deck a huge explosion vibrated the deck a torrent of green and white water broke over the ship a strong moving stream of green and white water it broke over the ship my head smashed into the wheel and i was aware of flying overboard and sinking below the waves i accepted my approaching death and as i was losing consciousness i felt quite peaceful 
so here narrator's head it smashed in the wheel of the ship he flew overboard and sank below the waves he accepted that his death was approaching and started losing consciousness he felt quite peaceful unexpectedly my head popped out of the water a few meters away wave walker was near capsizing her mast almost horizontal so when he lost his consciousness and was drowning his head it popped out of water and he saw that the ship was about to overturn but then a wave hurled her, her upright upright means straight my lifeline jerked taut i grabbed the guard rails guard rails means bars to support and sailed through the air into wave walker's main boom so here he says when the ship was about to overturn a wave turned her upright and his lifeline jacket was stretched he grabbed the guard rails and sailed to the ship's main pole subsequent waves tossed tossed means through me around the deck like a rag doll my left ribs cracked my mouth filled with blood and broken teeth somehow i found the wheel lined up lined up means straighten up the stern for the next wave and hung on hung on what wheel so he says that um, the wave they tossed him around the deck like a rag doll and he was injured as his left ribs cracked his mouth it mouth it was filled with blood and he had a broken tooth but he found the wheel he lined the stern for the next wave and waited and kept on uh, holding the wheel water water everywhere i could feel that the ship had water below but i dare not abandon abandon means leave the wheel to investigate to examine suddenly the front hatch hatch means door was thrown open and mary appeared who was mary his wife we are sinking she screamed the decks are smashed they are broken we are full of water take the wheel i shouted as i scrambled scrambled means crawled for the hatch for the door so when he uh, was at the wheel his wife she came and uh, they saw that water was everywhere and narrator could feel water below the ship but he did not leave the wheel alone and the same moment his wife she came screaming that they were sinking she said the decks are smashed and the boat is full of water narrator handed her the wheel and climbed towards the door Larry and Herb were pumping like madmen. The crew men, Larry and Herb, they were pumping the water very fast like madmen. Broken timbers hung at crazy angles. The whole starboard side bulged inwards. Clothes, crockery, charts, tins, and toys sloshed about in deep water. Sloshed about means moved in water with splashing sound. I half swam. half crawled into the children's cabin are you all right i asked yes they answered from an upper bunk but my head hurts a bit said sue sue here is his daughter suzanne pointing a big bump over her above her eyes i struggled uh, i had no time to worry about bumped heads After finding a hammer, screws and canvas, I struggled back on deck with the starboard side bashed open. We were taking water with each wave that broke over us. If I couldn't make some repairs, we would surely sink. So as we read uh, Larry and Herb they were pumping the water very fast and the timbers of the ship were broken and were hanging badly. Starboard of the ship 
starboard means the right side of the ship it had sunk clothes crockery charts tins and toys were roaming around in what deep water the narrator he swam and crawled to the children's cabin and asked the children whether they were all right the children replied yes sue his daughter complained about a big bump on her head the narrator did not pay much attention to it as his major concern was to save them from drowning the narrator found screws hammer and canvas and went back to the deck the broken starboard side was letting so much water in that if the narrator could not fix the problem they would all sink in the sea somehow i managed to stretch the canvas and secure waterproof hatch covers across the gaping holes gaping means wide opening some water continued to stream below but most of it was now being deflected over the side deflected means turned aside from the straight course more problems arose when our hand pump started to block up with the debris debris is rubbish garbage floating around the cabins and the electric pump short circuited the water level rose threateningly dangerously back on deck i found that our two spare hand pumps had been wrenched had been wrenched means they were twisted they were distorted overboard along with the forestay sail the jibe the dinghies and the main anchor so here narrator he stretched the canvas cloth and secured the waterproof hatch with uh, which covered the gaping holes some water it streamed below and some was now deflected over the side the hand pump was blocked as rubbish was floating around the cabins and entered it the electric pump short circuited as the water level rose the narrator found two hand pumps uh, had been removed along with the rope jibe a small boat and the main anchor then i remembered we had another electric pump under the chart room floor i connected it to an out pipe and was thankful to find that it worked so he found another electric pump which was under the chart room and he connected it to an out pipe and it started working the night dragged on with the endless bitterly cold routine of pumping staring and working the radio so whole night was about endless routine of pumping out water steering the wheel and working the radio we were getting no replies to our mayday calls mayday calls what are they they are the words used to signal ship stuck in a disastrous situation through radio so they were not getting any replies to their mayday calls which was not surprising in this remote corner of the world so as i said no replies to their signal sent over the radio why because they were in the remotest part of the world sue's head had swollen alarmingly she had two enormous huge big black eyes and now she showed us a deep cut on her ah uh, so the narrator's daughter head was now more swollen and she had two black eyes with a deep cut on her arm when i asked why she hadn't made more of her injuries before this she replied i didn't want to worry you when you were trying to save us all so when upon being asked why didn't she tell uh, about her injuries earlier she said that she didn't want to worry him worry her father as he was trying to save all of them by morning on january 3 the pumps had the water level sufficiently under control for us to take 2 hours rest in rotation but we still had a tremendous leak somewhere below the water line and on checking i found that nearly all the boats main ribs frames were smashed down to the keel in fact there was nothing holding up a whole section of the starboard hull except a few cupboard partition 
so the water level it was under control by the morning of january 3 th uh, so all of them took 2 hours rest in rotation but there was still a leak somewhere below the water line and upon checking the boat rib structure was badly broken down till the base of the ship the whole section of starboard was held together with a few cupboard partitions we had survived for 15 hours since the wave hit but wave walker wouldn't hold together long enough for us to reach australia with ship's condition it was so bad that it would not make it till australia i checked our charts and calculated that there were two small islands a few hundred kilometers to the east one of them i amsterdam was a french scientific base so i i amsterdam it was one of the islands within 100 kilometers and it was a french scientific base our only hope was to reach these pinpricks in the vast ocean pinpricks in the vast ocean means these two small islands in the ocean they were like tiny uh, prick caused by a pin you know a prick uh that is caused by a pin uh, when you pierce or when you prick your finger so that uh though like those pin pin pricks these islands were in the ocean so only hope was to reach these islands but unless the wind and seas abated abated means decreased so we could hoist sail or chances would be slim indeed so as uh, he said that when he checked charts and calculated there were two small islands a few kilometers to the east and one of them was isle amsterdam which was a french scientific base so their only hope was to search and reach that island but only if the wind and the sea do not cause further damage else their chances were slim chances were slim means chances were less the great wave had put our auxiliary engine out of action so the huge wave it had destroyed the ship's auxiliary engine auxiliary engine means the supplementary engine or the engine that is kept in reserve on january 4 after 36 hours of continuous pumping we reached the last few centimeters of water so after 36 hours of continuous pumping on january 4 the water was only a few centimeters left to be pumped out now we had only to keep pace with the water still coming in so now uh, since the water was left uh, only few centimeters left so but still they had to pump out the water which was coming in we could not set any sail on the main mast pressure on the rigging would simply pull the damaged section of the hull apart so they were not able to set any sail on the uh, main mast because the pressure on the rigging rigging means the ropes and the wires which support the structure of the ship so the pressure on them would simply pull the damaged section of the hull hull means the framework of the uh, ship so we hoisted the storm jibe and headed for where i thought two islands were Mary found some corned beef and cracker biscuits and we ate our first meal in almost 2 days. So here they had their first meal in 2 days that was some corned beef and cracker biscuits that were found by Mary. But our respite our relief it was short lived it was of short period. at 4 pm black clouds began building up behind us within the hour the wind was back to 40 knots and the seas were getting higher the weather continued to deteriorate throughout the night and by the dawn of january 5 dawn means early morning early morning of january 5 our situation was again desperate it was bad 
so the rest period was short lived as black clouds they built up around 4 pm the wind was now 40 knots and the sea was getting higher the weather got worse and by the early morning of january 5 the situation was desperate the situation was extremely bad when i went in to comfort the children john asked daddy are we going to die i tried to assure him that we could make it but daddy he went on we aren't afraid of dying if we can all be together you and mummy sue and i so when narrator he went to comfort his children his son asked him whether they were going to die narrator tried tried to assure him that they would make it that they would be able to uh, manage and uh, save themselves his son replied that they were not afraid to die till they all were together i could find no words with which to respond so here narrator he was uh, he got uh, full of emotions he had no words to uh, he had nothing to say to his son but he says that i left the children's cabin determined to fight the sea with everything i had so the words they filled the narrator with a determination to fight back to protect the weakened starboard side i decided to heave to heave to means to come to stop with the undamaged port hull facing the oncoming waves so as he uh, went back determined to fight back he made efforts to protect the weakened starboard side using an improvised sea anchor of heavy nylon rope and two 22 liter plastic barrels of paraffin paraffin is a uh, colorless flammable oil liquid so what he did he used an improvised sea anchor made of heavy nylon rope and two 22 liter plastic barrels of kerosene paraffin here is kerosene that's uh, uh, that evening uh, evening mary and i sat together holding hands as the motion of the ship brought more and more water in through the broken planks we both felt the end was very near so same evening narrator and his wife they sat holding hands and they believed that their end was near but wave walker rode out the storm and by the morning of january 6 with the wind easing easing means becoming less serious i tried to get a reading on the sextant what is sextant it's an instrument with graduated arc 60 degrees for taking altitudes and navigation so he tried to get a reading on the sextant back in the chart room i worked on wind speeds changes of course drift drift means current slow current and current in an effort to calculate our position so the ship it made it through the storm and by the morning of january 6 the narrator tried to get reading on the sextant he worked with wind speed drift and current and calculated their position the best i could determine was that we were somewhere in 150000 kilometers of ocean looking for a 65 kilometer wide island so they were in 150000 kilometers area of ocean and they were looking for a 65 kilometer wide island while i was thinking sue moving painfully joined me the left side of her head was now very swollen and her blackened eyes narrowed to slits she gave me a card she had made so the same moment when the narrator was still thinking his daughter she joined him and she was in pain the left side of her head was swollen and her blackened eyes had narrowed down to slits but still in that situation she made a card and gave to her father uh, 
uh, the card which was made uh, by herself she gave it to him on the front she had drawn caricatures caricatures means cartoon of mary and me with the words so on the front of the card was cartoon image of her parents with words written about uh, them being funny people and how they made her laugh so here are some funny people did they make you laugh i laughed a lot as well inside was a message so on the inside of the card there was a message and she said oh how i love you both so this card is to say thank you and let's hope for the best somehow we had to make it so inside the card she told them how she loved them both and she thanked them this made the narrator realize that they had to make it to the island which island yes the isle amsterdam which is a french scientific base i checked and rechecked my calculations we had lost our main compass and i was using a spare which had not been corrected for magnetic variation so narrator he rechecked his calculations though he had lost his main compass uh, but still he was using the spare one which was not corrected for magnetic variation i made an allowance for this and another estimate of the influence of the westerly currents which flow through this part of the indian ocean so he estimated the influence of westerly currents which flow through the indian ocean about 2 pm i went on deck and asked larry to steer a course of one steer a course of 185 degrees if we were lucky i told him with a conviction with a belief i did not feel so he says that i told him with a conviction with a belief but he himself did not feel it that they could expect to see the island at about 5 pm so at around 2 pm he went on deck and asked larry to steer the wheel to 185 degrees and he said that he, if they were lucky they would see the island by 5 pm then with a heavy heart i went below climbed on my bunk and amazingly dozed off when i woke it was 6 pm and growing dark i knew we must have missed the island and with the sail we had left we couldn't hope to beat back into the westerly winds so uh, after telling uh, larry to steer the wheel to 185 degrees narrator went below and slept he woke up around 6 pm it was dark outside he thought that they might have missed the island he started worrying uh, about how they would tackle the westerly winds more as the ship wasn't capable to sail more at that moment a tousled head tousled head means disarranged hair appeared by my bunk can i have a hug now i jonathan asked so uh, was right behind him so at the same moment his son came and asked him for a hug his daughter followed why am i getting a hug now i asked because you are the best daddy in the whole world and the best captain my son replied so father asked why was he getting a hug from his son his son replied that he was the best daddy in the world and also called him the best captain not today john i am afraid narrator replied that he was afraid today he couldn't prove himself to be the best daddy why you must be said sue in a matter of fact voice but his daughter told him that he should be uh, proud of himself and he is a best best daddy in the world you found the island what i shouted it's out there in front of us they chorused they chorused mean they said same thing at the same time as big as battle ship so when she told him that they had found the island which was as big as a battle ship i rushed on deck and gazed with 
relief at the stark outline of Isle Amsterdam. It was only a bleak piece of volcanic rock with little vegetation. The most beautiful island in the world. So narrator here, he rushed to the deck and gave a sigh of relief. They could see the complete outline of Isle Amsterdam. There was a bleak piece of volcanic rock in front of them. Bleak piece means that island, it was an area which lacked vegetation and it was desolate. Uh, it says that with little vegetation means very little vegetation was found on it and it was the most beautiful island in the world. While writer, uh, narrator called it the most beautiful island in the world, it's because that, that was the only hope for their survival in the sea. We anchored offshore for the night and the next morning all 28 inhabitants of the island cheered as they helped us ashore. With land under, under my feet again, my thoughts were full of Larry and Herbie, cheerful and optimistic under the direst stress and of, my, and of Mary who stayed at the wheel for all those crucial hours. Most of all, I thought of a seven-year-old girl who did not want us to worry about a head injury which subsequently took six minor operations to remove a recurring blood clot between the skin and skull and of a six-year-old boy who was not afraid to die. So these people, when they found the island, they moved the ship at some distance from the shore and the next morning, 28 inhabitants of the Amsterdam island helped them to move on the shore of the land. As narrator felt the land again under his feet, he thought of his crewmen and his wife. He also thought of his seven-year-old daughter who was badly injured and had to undergo through six minor operations to remove the blood clot in her ha head. His son who never gave up and was not afraid to die. So he uh, thought about all the members that were with him and they, it was this togetherness that gave him courage and valor and uh, held him calm in times of adversities and uh, the family it still it kept his courage and uh, as a result they were able to save themselves with this we come to an end of the explanation of this chapter now we have these questions and uh, please do them in your notebooks list the steps taken by the captain for uh, what to protect the ship when rough weather began so when rough weather began what did he do he decided to slow down the ship to protect it from bad and stormy weather he dropped the storm jib and lashed heavy mooring rope across the stern of the ship and double lashed everything. He all, they also carried their life raft drill, attached lifelines, domed life jackets and oil skin. Secondly, what is the second one? To check the flooding of the water in the ship. To check the flooding of the water, narrator, he put waterproof hatch which covered the gapping holes and this diverted the water flow to the side. His hand pumps were blocked due to debris and his one electric pump was short-circuited but still he found a hand pump and a spare uh, electric pump and he connected the electric pump to the outpipe and started it. Now next is describe the mental conditions of the voyagers on 4th and 5th January. On January 4, they felt relieved as they were continuously pumping out water for the past 36 hours and only a few centimeters of water was left. They had their first meal in two days. Mary found some corned beef and cracker biscuits. But what happened on 5th? Later around 4 p.m. the weather it changed as black clouds and marched towards them. 
and the wind was now 40 knots and the sea was getting higher and weather it got worse and by the early morning of January 5th the situation was bad which gave them mental stress. Describe the shifts in the narration of the events as indicated in the three sections of the text. So the first section it talks about uh, beginning the beginning of the round the voyage. Uh, it was cheerful and full of hope as the family it began their planned voyage just like the one done 200 years ago by famous Captain Cook and these people they perfected their seafaring skills for 16 years built their own ship named Wave Walker and uh, they celebrated Christmas on the ship despite the bad weather second section talks about struggle with the big attack big attack here was of the waves the giant wave that created chaos and the ship was about to overturn the narrator was thrown off into the water and almost drowned and got injured and uh, the two crewmen they continuously pumped out the water from ship for uh, for a continuous 36 hours narrator tried repairing the parts of the ship he almost lost his hope and believed they would die but his children they were fearless and courageous enough and that gave him the determination to fight back. The third section is we can say victory because with the support of his children the narrator kept trying to save the ship in order to reach the two small island Isle Amsterdam. Uh, they finally reached the destination and got help from the inhabitants of the island and his son. He called his daddy the best daddy and the best captain. Now talking about the text, uh, I would like you to do it on your own. If you find any problem, you can ask me in the group. That's all for today. Thank you.